Hi guys, this is Jordan from Rapido Train Zinc, and I'm back for our August unboxing video. This week I have two different uh, products that I'm unpacking here. We've got the HO scale PA1s, PB1s, and whatnot. Um, we're going to have a look at that in a little bit. But first off, I'm going to show you our all new HO scale Auto Flood 3 Rapid Discharge Coal Hoppers. I've got two of them already set up here. So why don't I move the PAs over to the side for now, and we will start the unboxing. Right, first we'll remove the plastic outer layer, put that aside. Here you can see we've got our uh, standard repeato box. Just open the door there, put that aside. As you can see we've got stickers if that's your kind of thing. Exploded parts menu and instructions. So you've got the, uh, there's the uh, exploded parts menu there and there's a quick prototype uh, review of the cars. And of course the car itself. So as you can see, two piece clamshell. We'll just take that off, lift the car out, take it out of the plastic wrap. And also you'll notice that your car comes with the uh, handy dandy lighter. No, these do not have lighting in them like our passenger cars, but I'm gonna show you in a couple minutes what that's for, so stay tuned for that. So let me give you some quick prototype info on these cars before we start looking at the models. So these cars were built by Freight Car America starting in 2004, and they were built by the tens of thousands for uh, railroads all across the US. Now they could be seen in service like I said, all across the U.S. and could also be seen uh, in a couple places in Canada as well, particularly up in the Pacific Northwest towards uh, Vancouver there. BNSF runs some coal trains up to uh, Delta Port, as I recall. Uh, almost any coal train you see uh, will have, especially out west coming out of the Powder River, you'll see lots of these, sometimes whole strings of them. So let's look at the models themselves now. I've got the Union Pacific CMO reporting mark car uh, right in my hand here. As you can see, the coal load is installed, and if you wave the magnetic wand just over the car, this acts as a tool to remove your coal load. You see all that gorgeous detail on the inside of the car. Now, these come with a full die cast frame, so you've got lots of weight there. The whole frame at the bottom of the car is die cast. Looking at the underbody there again, there's all the separately applied rapid discharge gate detail. Looking at the ends, you've got the uh, etched metal see-through crossover platform. You've got the air and brake lines just beside the couplers. Separately applied the brake wheel and all the associated brake plumbing and whatnot. And of course, we have our 100-ton Barber S2 truck. And as you can see, we've done the blue bearing caps on top of there as well. And yes, these do come with our new Rapido semi-scale metal couplers. So having a look at all of the road names in this first release, we have two versions of BNSF either the standard BNSF car with the wedge scheme, or we have the BNSF double rotary car, which is notable by the markings in the ends of each car, kind of that brown marking. As you've seen already, we have CEFX, which is the CIT group. We have the GATX Corporation, GGPX. We have the unique Indiana Railroad 2 millionth car load special. This is a one-off car, only one road number is available. Gulf Power Company, GLFX reporting marks. KPLX, as we already looked at before, that's for Western Resources Incorporated. UPCMO, again, as we saw a few minutes ago. And Carolina Light and Power, PGNX. So that's a quick look at our HO scale Auto Flood 3 Rapid Discharge Coal Hoppers. We have a couple of extras of some road names, so if you haven't uh, already pre-ordered, please see your dealer or visit us online at repeatotrains.com. So uh, with that said, don't forget, we've also got the N-Scale Auto Flood 3s the same road names and, and numbers being produced uh, right now. They're actually leaving the factory very shortly and will be arriving in the fall. And we'll be back to show you those cars in the not too distant future. Next up, let's look at our Alco PAs. So there you go, there's our box. I've already kind of got two of the units sticking out there. This is actually the PA2s. SP's units were uh, in this batch were, uh, were PA2s and PB2s. There's the uh, sleeve. We'll just put that over to the side. You can see all the nice drawings and whatnot on there. Start with the A unit. Of course, we've got our operating service manual. Made to look like an old Alco uh, training manual, of course. Put that aside there. There's the exploded parts diagram. And there we go. There's the sleeve for our PA2. Before I put the box aside, we also have... Oh, there we go. There is all the different headlight lenses. So you've got the tri-light, 
uh, the original single kind of uh, headlight there and associated lenses. Uh, the, these units change their lights uh, sometimes two or three times over their careers. So we've included all those details if you'd like to switch it up. And there's the PA2. Of course, can't forget the matching V unit. Again, same exploded parts diagram, your operating manual. There we go, and there's the B unit. Constructed between 1946 and 1953, the Alco PA series is considered by many rail fans to be some of the most beautiful diesels ever produced. Built as a partnership between the American Locomotive Company and General Electric, the PA1s were powered by Alco's 16-cylinder 244 diesel, with the PA's, PA1s, that is, producing 2,000 horsepower, and the later PA2s upgraded to 2,250. Built to compete with General Motors E-Series passenger locomotives, one could argue that the PAs won in terms of the styling department, but definitely not in terms of their reliability, with the 244 prime movers not able to unseat EMD's 567. While they were built originally for some of North America's premier passenger services, they were quickly demoted to secondary services on many railroads, and were some of the first passenger locomotives retired as services declined in the 1960s. By the late 1960s, almost all had been scrapped, except for a handful that were purchased by the Delaware and Hudson, which later went to Mexico. These locomotives are the last remaining North American PAs today, with two in Mexico and two in the United States. Our HO scale PA model is all new from the ground up and was produced by taking a 3D scan of Doyle McCormick's famous PA preserved at the Oregon Rail Heritage Center in Portland, Oregon. Originally a Santa Fe locomotive, this unit went to the Delaware and Hudson before ending up in Mexico in the late 1970s. In the 90s, it was brought to Portland by Doyle to be preserved and painted in the wonderful nickel plate bluebird scheme. Okay, so I've got our Southern Pacific PA2 and PB2 set uh, right in front of me here. And as you can see, they come with the full kind of gamut of SP correct details. Probably the most unique feature on SP units was the full kind of plow pilot. No other PAs had these, and they're really notable for use in you know, like a lot of SPs, kind of mountainous territory over Donner Pass and some of the other kind of mountainous territory that they would have had to deal with. You've got the SP train number boards, so they are blank because SP would have put their, uh, the actual train numbers in those boards at the time. Later on, they moved away from that, but by that time, these engines were pretty much retired. We've got all of the headlight detail here. Separately applied grab irons up and down the side of the nose. SP specific horn detail and all the associated plumbing with that. We have the dynamic brakes on the roof. And as you can see, it has kind of the little triangular snow shields on either side to prevent snow from getting sucked into the dynamic brakes. Most notably, you have the icebreaker bars. SP had their three-quarter domes that they were running on their trains, especially in the mountainous territory. You wouldn't want those glass windows to break when going through the tunnels, so they installed these. There you've got the single uh, radiator fan, the little kind of platform over top of it. We've got the exhaust stack there, and we have either the air-cooled or the water-cooled exhaust as per uh, correct for each prototype and the steam generator detail. Again, there's the B unit, a lot of those same details, a little bit more simplistic. You've got the single trumpet air horn there for, I guess, for doing your hostling moves and whatnot. And a lot of that same detail you'll see on the A units as well. So having a full look at all of the other paint schemes available in this first release, we have Santa Fe available in both A's and A plus B sets in the war bonnet scheme. We have three road numbers of Delaware and Hudson. In case you're wondering why we're only doing three of the road numbers, the fourth road number had some pretty significant modifications in terms of the side grills where they were rebuilt with more of a EMD style grill while the other three units maintain their Alco details. We have Denver and Rio Grande Western, again available in either single A's or A and B sets. Other schemes include Lehigh Valley in uh, single units, single units for New Haven in the delivery scheme, New York Central A units or A and B sets, single unit nickel plate in the Bluebird scheme. We have Pennsylvania A units or A and B sets. A units in particular have a number of unique Penzi details, including the full train phone antenna on the roof, plus the unique Penzi number boards. 
Of course, Southern Pacific in both the Daylight and Bloody Nose schemes. And finally, the single American Freedom Train PA. This locomotive is also available with the etched metal Eagle crests that were applied earlier on in the Freedom Train service, which were later removed. So you can decide if you want to have them installed or not. We may have some limited numbers available still, so please visit our website and see if, uh, if we have any availability or see your dealer. So thanks once again for joining me. I will be back again in September. We've got some interesting product announcements to, uh, to bring to you, so we will see you then. Have a good one.